guarantee you that before you get the I can't do more than you've done now. For preparation for the year. Conditions good for Daley Thompson. The perfectionist will be looking for something around ten point. Would you please leave the area? We'll be having uh, reports out twice a day from here and uh, specifically looking at uh, political events which uh, are connected to the Games. Punches hard with both hands, you know? And beside that, he's a nice person. His only problem is he was born a coloured person. But he can overcome that, I think, anyhow. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Where do you come from? Okay. What's your heritage? Um, uh, my mother's a Bruce and my father's a Torres Strait Islander. Torres Strait, that's what I thought. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that a handicap to you or not? No. It's no, you don't feel it's a real honest handicap? What's that, being coloured? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no way at all, no. Like, we can talk man to man, can't we? Of course we can. Yeah. And it's not a hurdle? No. All you've got to do is be good enough to jump the hurdle. That's right. Is that what, is that what you're telling me? That's good, yeah. And that's what I think you are, OK? Yeah. i tell you what I'd like to say to you, Doug. Yeah. You're one of the nicest coloured people, and I don't mean black or white, you're one of the nicest people that I've ever met. You're a pleasant personality. Thanks. You carry yourself well, you look after yourself, you're clean and tidy, you're a credit to your, to, to your people. Good faster, Doug. Come on, hold on. Well, he's like a cat. They seem to have it a little that way, the... Uh, Aboriginal boys, they just seem to be sharper and uh, more relaxed. And he's a good puncher too, a good puncher. What makes you such a good boxer, do you think? Because I, I put a lot of time in it. I plan things. And I think, and I'm, I'm not a brawler, so I'm a thinker, see? <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. I might come around this afternoon, though, if I can think of anything else, or ring you up at the Melbourne or something. Is that okay? Just watch what you say about the land rights. Huh? When are you, when's it going to come out, that paper? Uh, Sunday. On Sunday. Do you have your own individual position on that whole land rights thing? No. You don't want to I don't want to say it too much. No. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. No. OK. No. I've got my own views, but I don't, don't want to put them down the papers. As the Commonwealth Games open in Brisbane later this week, fears persist that the athletic efforts of some of the world's finest sportsmen and women will be overshadowed by a far more physical conflict off the track and field. The Aboriginal land rights movement and its supporters are organised and committed to exploiting the Games to push their cause. The Queensland Government and the not-so-gentle Queensland Police are equally committed to putting down any concerted protest or attempt to disrupt the Games. We're going to use the Commonwealth Games for our protest because during the Commonwealth Games you're going to have thousands of media people from around the world who will be there in Brisbane with the Games that will be held. Now, we thought this was our chance to get our message across to the world via the media people that is 
that are going to be in Brisbane to tell the rest of the world how blacks are treated here in Queensland, how we have special legislation for blacks, you know? Can you see the need, and this is what the most people will be asking, obviously, the need to demonstrate at the Commonwealth Games about land rights. Can you see the need? I can see why the people who will be demonstrating see a need, because they feel they have to bring this, this to the attention of the world, because they feel they failed at okay, home. OK, and having brought it to the attention of the world, the attention of the world, what then? You know as well as I do that that's not going to overcome their problem. <laughs> Les Québécois qui sont toujours un peu en train de se sentir un peu plus chez, chez soi. Merci beaucoup. Hum. Hum. D'habitude, les proportions, comment il y a de français sur l'équipe canadienne Comment il va avoir d'anglais 3 sur 10. 3 sur 10. On aurait pu en avoir 4, mais on n'a pas. La croix va y aller. Non, la croix n'y va pas. Je pense que les gens du, des pays du Commonwealth n'imaginent pas que, que le Québec est français, qu'il y a une partie du Canada, là, que ça parle français, hum. puis qu'on était une colonie, que... euh, une ancienne colonie française. Peut-être qu'ils savent qu'il y a du français, mais bah, à titre folklorique, quelque chose comme ça. T'sais. Alors que, dans le fond, c'est la langue du jazz, c'est quand même la langue de tous les jours. Et si je suis coach, puis si l'équipe est par exemple à 50 ou 75 francophone, supposons, hein, nos échanges seront au moins moitié-moitié. Mm -hmm. euh... Je trouve qu'en ce qui me concerne, quand c'est des noms français, à consonance française qui remportent, ça me touche beaucoup plus. Puis quand c'est des noms à consonance anglaise, euh, j'ai aucun intérêt. En général, je me sens pas représentée. I love Quebec because uh, here I love a lot of things. Uh, I'm not just sightless. Uh, I won't be an artist, you know. I work here, I study here. I, wo I have a whole house. And uh, I like uh, the history, I like the, the old history to Quebec. And I want to keep, I want to keep the, the French Quebec. It's very important for me. I don't know, maybe it's a sociologic problem, but I want to stay here, you know, for have a good, a good French Quebec. Pierre Utsubo is uh, my coach uh, since uh, about three years, and uh, it's important for me because now the race is very hard, the level is, is high, you know. Sometimes I can win a race, just uh, if Pierre helped me. During the race, he is the coach, but Pierre is my friend, you know, he's a good friend for me. Just to zoom in a little bit of your distance. C'est qu'il y en a un qui est parti dans... Oh! You're obliged to go far away, I think. I had it, huh? You know, it's uh, our house, a very old house from uh, Quebec. This house is about uh, 150 years old. Uh, we have a lot of job, but uh, maybe in two years you can live here together in this uh, in this house. Oh. I like fighting, you know. I like uh, it's a very big project, but we can do something. So. <laughs> Tu 
mets tout ton cœur à te payer du beurre et tu m'oublies dans ton It's, uh, it's very intimate for me, you know, I don't talk about my sculpture or painting because nobody, and when I talk about that, nobody understands me, you know, so, <laughs> my parents also, <laughs> but uh, for me, art is very, it's, it's like uh, my bike, you know, when I, I work in my heart, I'm alone, you know, like when I train and uh, I'm my boss. And it's expression, not to my body, but to my head. Sightless and art is, I think it's, what's that, the name? The balance. The extraordinary things here in Canada is that we have uh, two of the top spinners in the world, the, the female spinners, both Angela Taylor and Angela Bailey. And uh, it's kind of exciting in a way because they're both right here in Toronto. Uh, we sort of have a, a bit of a problem because there's such a competitive thing between the two of them. You know, like if we train up at York University, say one is at one end of the trap, one's at the other. So... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> sometimes we like to... Uh, we'll come downtown Toronto here or whatever. It's getting easier, though, because we're getting together more often for relay practices and whatever. And, and the two of them, as opposed to being at each other's throat, which they were a year or two ago, uh, now it's sort of coming together as a Canadian team. And I think by the Commonwealth, it's going to be pretty exciting. Better. Better. Hey! Better. Is that too fast? Slightly before the mark, but, but better, because you're bending. I think for any any two athletes in, in a top level, there's going to be some sort of rivalry between them. But I think in this situation with the two Angelas, both in the one city, it's particularly intense because they have to watch each other train. They're always aware of what each other are doing and try and psych each other out. It's a very clinical atmosphere and they rarely talk to each other. It's generally, Angela will say something to me, I'll say it to Charlie, and then Charlie will say it to the other Angela. It's that type of thing. Mental, you have to be mentally strong. Or you have, no, I think what makes me so strong is I have total faith and confidence in my coach and my training program. Every, I do everything Charlie says. I do whatever he says. I know it's right, and I know it's going to help me. And part of the reason why I'm, I, you know, I'm, I have such faith in Charlie is because he brought me from being seventh in Canada one year to seventh in the world the next year. Anybody would have, would, would have faith in a coach like that or in a program like that. I know she had to work hard, but I think sometimes she really overtrains. I know. When she wants to get away from helping to do little things, she says, well, she's tired and then she has to go, go training. But I think, but it is, huh? It's tough, it really tough. is. If you don't train, somebody just comes up and takes your place away from you. I know it is tough, but I think... Oh, geez, we've been going out for three and a half years. I started dating her long before I ever started coaching her. And uh, at, at the time, the Canadian Track and Field Association had sort of deemed her as uh, uncoachable and a little bit undisciplined and too much of a mind of her own. Uh, so I, I thought, well, gee, that's ridiculous. So I jumped in, and there was a lot of friction there at the beginning. But now that we're getting results, we seem to be getting a, a little more accepted. See, I can do it. You can do it. I can do it. Wimp. I got my spikes on. I just wimp. We're just two people heading for the exact same goal, and it's impossible to get along in that in that respect. This year is going to be absolutely fantastic. The Commonwealth Games are going to be real good for me. Even though John's not, probably won't be there because he's not on the list right now, I feel that he's given me enough confidence for me to go out there and be very independent and I know that I'm going to compete really well. I, I'm a bigger girl. I am a stronger girl. There's a lot of the, the, the fittest survive. The stronger, the bigger you are, the better you will do. The funny thing is, in Canada, I'd run worse than I do in the, in the international meets because then I'm thinking about Angela Bailey here because I have to win. When I go in an international meet, Angela Bailey does not exist anymore. All of a sudden, we're talking about Evelyn Ashford, Catherine Smallwood from Great Britain, and Merlene Otte. That's it. And that's what's going to happen when I go to the Commonwealth Games. If Merlene goes, and Catherine Smallwood. I'm never concerned about Angela Bailey. I don't remember her then.
China, Japan, they, they have got a good good standard, standard. standard. but in in Commonwealth, I think he's got very very chances for getting gold medal. Nobody very close to to him. Absolutely, he's going to take it up. decided that he would start doing some things with rock beats. Oh, I'm taking, I'm taking 12 hours this semester. I'm taking um, kinesiology. That's the movement of muscles. You study about the muscles. And I'm doing um, biology, general biology, and um, political science. That's American politics. And I'm doing a music class. Learn about jazz, you know, rock, reggae, you know. For me, for me, I have to, you know, I have to work hard. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not that smart in class, you know, I have to work, I have to do hard. And, and I, I want, my goal is to get my degree. Well, that little boy, he had a determined mind from his little, going to basic school. This morning, um, he going to school. That uh, our money is in pens, shilling and pens. And I didn't give him that penny, not going. He follow me wow. to where I work and not going until I give him that penny. And then after I give him that penny, now he go to school. Well, 
they have to run for their school. They're under scholarship. They have an obligation to run for them. And so, uh, you know, they have no option. They've got to go out and run. And, and a lot of athletes, especially the world-class athletes, don't want to be in that situation. They want to be able to run and be prepared in the, you know, for the big meets later on. They have to run every single, way, every single week. They get broken down, they get tired, and they get injured. And uh, so that's what we want to stay away from. My relationship over here is not, a, you know, is not as good as, you know, my coach in Jamaica. Because my coach in Jamaica is like, you know, father and son. I love, every, I love all the people in Jamaica, and that, that's my home. And that's all I talk about over here, just Jamaica, Jamaica. People tired to hear me talk about Jamaica. You know, if you come to my room, we're going to sit down. We're going to, I'm going to tell you everything about Jamaica. I'm going to tell you the good things, the bad things. But that's my home, and I have to go back. matures somewhat a little bit more and realizes that he you know he does need somebody you know to be be with him you know a little bit more than you know than just being being alone or being you know making all his all his decisions you think everybody needs that yes sometimes you know the decision one makes is not necessarily the right one so you need you know a little bit of consultation with you know like your coach or an advisor you know say well listen um, i have this idea what do you think about it, you know? Why you dread, you know what I mean? Well, one thing I think I could do to help him. Pray for him. You know, the Lord to give him strength. Because that I always do. And whenever time I hear the news that he win, I always say, thank you, Jesus. It's not he who do it of himself. It's the Lord who really brought him through. Since about November last year, I've been training really solidly. Just been doing competitions gradually and leading up to the nationals next week, and um, then the games. Then we'll go into camp, and so then we'll do heaps of heavy training for a couple of weeks, and then um, then the Commonwealth Games. I, I just hope I do well. <laughs> I'd like to win, but then you never know what could happen. <laughs> Obviously, uh, I've got to say to you, oh, at least I'll win the gold medal, which may or may not be. Be correct, but if I say to you, oh, yes, you haven't got much of a chance of that, or it's going to be tough or something, you know, that's not good for that athlete to think the coach uh, may not think she can win it. 
<laughs> um, Cheryl Gibson, the Canadian, and we don't really know how she's swimming. And Georgie Parks from the Institute. Uh, well, she's at the Institute now, but um, I've swum with her since I was about 13, since she was about 12. We trained together until, just until this year. Georgina has began swimming here when she was uh, eight years old, I think, and uh, has gone all the way through, and uh, is now at the Institute, Sports Institute in Canberra. Government sponsored. This is private enterprise. You can't read a sports psychology book, you can't talk to a sports psychologist without hearing the phrase fear of failure mentioned. If you want to succeed because you fear the results of failing, and it's just like the guy on the blocks before the relay. Now it's, it's that negative thing he's focused on, the false start. Now if you're focused on the negative aspects of failure instead of the positive rewards of success, then failure is probably going to be what you'll experience. And it's all a matter of attitude and frame of mind, but it makes the difference. Now, when Georgie first arrived at the Institute, I felt that her biggest problem psychologically was confidence or lack of confidence. She had been swimming in the shadow of Australia's top backstroker for a couple of years in the same club program. And her performance in the world championships which was better than any other commonwealth swimmer and better than any other swimmer in the world except for one will do a lot to boost her confidence <laughs> champion one time in the professional uh, field. Once I finish up, I think if I get a gold medal in the Brisbane Games, which I, which I know I will, probably I'll just, uh, I'll just try and turn pro and see what I'll do in pro. Well, when you think uh, international wise, uh, he's uh, got more experience. Uh, and uh, he's all Africa, he's all Africa gold medalist. And, uh, Recently, he won the King's Cup gold medal. Uh, he's the King's Cup gold medalist twice, uh, no, thrice. He won three gold medals, 1980, 81, and 82. And uh, we hope in the common games, at least he go, he's going to win a gold. Girlfriend, I got a son. He's eight months old. His name is Marvin. Uh, I love, I love them both. I love to take care of them. This is the place we live in, and we we are glad because at least you got somewhere to hide yourself. So we. Just take it easy, you know. We hope, we all, always hope for the best. A lot of Aboriginal fighters have been through boxing. 
And I'll probably just be another black fighter. You know? And uh, I'm, not, I'm not a good speaker or anything like um, Cassius Clay was, and he, um, he was something else different, and there'll be another, never be another one like him. But I don't, I don't think I have any over here. Although I might, I might be the first, <laughs> never know. Well, uh, I hope you do all right for yourself up to the game when you turn pro later on. We're just hoping for that proud mm. moment when we can, you know, if he should win, win the medal. I think I'll be the happiest mum in the world then. <laughs> and the people on Palm? Oh, my word, he's born on Palm and they all, even now, they all look up to Doug, the Palm Islanders. Even the old Palm Islanders on the mainland, they're very interested in Doug. I think they're the, they're the ones that will get a thrill out of it if Dougie should win a medal. And the Tully people as well. They travel miles from Tully in a taxi just to see him fight. The Tully people. So that's how much they think of him. Well, I know Dougie's family very, very well. Of course, they should be because we're very, you know, closely related. And uh, the hardship that the family had to go through all these years to train Dougie to send him away to make sure he kept that, that desire to fight and to continue on with that, that chosen job or chosen profession of his, if you like to call it, you know? The dedication that that family has put into getting Dougie to the present place that he's in now, the top in Australia, he's the best in Australia, you know? The point I would like to make is that we're not going to get land rights here in Queensland unless we fight for it, unless we protest, unless we do march. We don't have to sit down and cop what's been handed out all these years. It's no good going through the system the system that's been designed by people like the Premier of the state, who himself makes the laws. We sent back our first uh, coverage of Sunday's march. Today we're putting up a satellite that will carry about 10 minutes of today's march and any developments that follow it. And uh, when the Aborigine protests happen, we consider that uh, attached to the games and we'll be covering it in that manner. One would like to come to games like this and cover only the sports, but I think that's a rather naive approach to any large sporting, international sporting event now because unfortunately sports and politics can't be separated. So we come to games like this prepared to report on some sort of political aspects of the, uh, the municipality or the country we're in. And so uh, the Aboriginal problems and the, the Commonwealth Games will be treated as equals and go hand in hand as one story or two stories within one.
hammer. Right. Come on, it's the that's lightest special. Punch. That's the lightest out, out mate. That's yeah, the yeah, lightest, yeah, that is the lightest it. badge yeah. out. That's the lightest you can badge. ask anyone, that is the lightest yeah, badge out. It. It's so light here. Yeah. 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 Have you got it? Have you got that badge? No, this is the lightest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lightest badge out. That's it. Thank you. And a dollar to go with it, too. Time to ask Prince Philip, who's your president, on my behalf, to declare open. Slow. Yeah. Yeah, so okay, if you miss this round, it's over. Training for one whole year. And just go bam. 49 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> one year, just around 49 seconds, and you just get you. Thoughts of the Aboriginal people in the in Brisbane was um, putting a lot of pressure on me until I got these letters. Now that I've read these letters, I feel a lot better because they um, most of them seem to um, support support me in um, heading for the gold medal in the games. draw your attention to the results scoreboard. Engaged in this event in lane eight from Jamaica, Bertland Cameron, the Commonwealth record holder, number one in the world. Hold your box.
set. It's a night swim. She slept today. I haven't slept. I couldn't sleep today. I was having it off the toilet all day. Why you use this? Come on. Come on. He's been very hungry. No breakfast this morning, so he's uh, enjoying his lunch. That's one of the dodges. In the meantime, take this opportunity to explain some aspects of the event. Each lifter has six attempts, three in the snatch lift and three in the clean and jerk. The best mine snatch and the best clean and jerk. Come on, the last bit. Strong. The last one was too good. Good, strong one. All you got, mate. I was speaking to Nick earlier. He's very confident, as his uh, coaches. Paul Coffer and Bruce Walsh, the next right on target. A very important lift, the first one. Here he goes at 90 kilos. That's an excellent lift from Nick. Just waiting on the referee's lights. He still hasn't got the down. And he's not at all happy with the referee. I'll be interested to see what the uh, light situation is. He got three whites, but my word, Peter, he was trying to hold that right up for a long, long time. So perhaps... Uh, Starting off on what will be a fairly difficult uh, road to go. The duty of a coach is also quite heavy one. If he feels that his lifter is psychologically down whenever he finds lifter of his caliber, he is not able to show his performance, then we, I have to infuse in him the spirit to fight and to win. Because when the two lifters of the same caliber meet each other in the contest, 
it is only through vision they see each other. Whoever feel very much confident and uh, have a uh, sort of a desire to do and die, he already wins before the contest starts. So the other is psychologically goes down. Same way for Ekam Baram Karuna Karan, 90 kilos. The bar is loaded for Karuna Karan, first attempt. sensation. Perhaps the little bit of uh, news that we had before the competition started today wasn't far off when we heard that Karuna Karan wasn't uh, completely fit. He's not lifting anywhere near like I from last year. He's, just to give you an indication of Karuna Karan's ability though, he holds the Commonwealth record in the uh, snatch at 100 kilos, so he's well down at his personal best. I think a completely fit Karuna Karan certainty no. no you can see from that Neville he certainly doesn't look as strong as he normally is and I think he's got a problem mentally obviously he's in real trouble well I can tell you that he's not hiding from the competition under that blanket he's trying to keep warm and maybe that is indicative of a, of a fever his coach there from India and he's their number one lifter under real real pressure right now for the second attempt it's a must this one if he doesn't the artist is well on the way to a gold medal uh, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, you please the note not to take these away with you. They must be left with the doctor at all times, okay? Good. I was a few grams over uh, last night, but I shed those I shed those off this morning. So there shouldn't be any problem. From Kenya, I'm sure wearing a white shorts. Peter Kamau won year game. is going up to light me the way. So I wouldn't say how. I, would, I don't know anything about the guy. champion, a winner of the gold medal in the King's Cup this year and also in the East and Central African Championships, but he uh, doesn't seem to have displayed that type of form in this contest. And the Kenyan will have to pull something out here to win this contest. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen. The official decision is a majority points decision to the blue corner to Charles Okolo of Nigeria. I don't know, maybe I didn't win, but the judges thought I, I lost. So I'll try my luck in pro. Maybe I'll do better. Just one lift now. And there could be years of training going out the back door if he is unsuccessful at this attempt. The bar set at 90 kilograms. No, Neville, you can see Karuna Karan there just... Uh, trying to prepare himself he just cannot believe this here he is in the commonwealth games with the third and final attempt if he misses this it's a bomb he cannot win a medal so it's an absolute must Bombs out of the competition. Well, that is absolutely sensational here at Sandy. What's just as bad up to the room. Now, it's terribly disappointing to see this, Neville. As I said, uh, Karuna Karan obviously not well. And unfortunately, oh, now the uh, competition or the battle for the yeah, medal is gone. Nick Bukalatis from Australia, who yes, already recorded 90 kilos on his first oh. attempt, and the young Indian lifter Komboya, who came in rated second to Karuna oh. Karan. So uh, Bukalatis is right in there. It has to be a silver or gold. And Karuna Karan, the favourite, already out of the competition. You can probably hear there in the background the partisan crowd cheering on the Australian champion. And now Nick Bukalatis. A red hot gold medal favourite for Australia. Right, he's right. Good strong jerk. In the groove, Nicky. Concentrate. Go on, Nicky. Concentrate. Come on, Nick. Concentrate. Strong clean, Nick. Go, mate. Come on, mate. Use your time. Come on, mate. Strong clean. Come on. Strong. Come on, Nick. Concentrate. Big ball. Yeah, Come on, Nick. Get up. Big chest. Daddy. Big chest. Push. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Push. You. You killed it. So maybe the gold medal lift, but uh, an injury. What do you think, Peter? I think he's 
I think he's. I he's hope it's only cramp. By the look of the way they're at, uh, attending his calf muscle there, but um, we'll just have to wait. That's a, that's a terrible thing if that's the case. Anyway, they'll carry him out the back for for attention, but uh, that's uh, a real sensation here at the weightlifting. Uh, the most important thing it was a successful lift for Nick. From my point of view, I wish I could cheer uh, up here in the commentary point, but I better spare you of that. Nick Fukulatas. being unashamedly proud of being an Australian. What a wonderful way to start the Commonwealth Games here in Brisbane on home territory. The first gold medal of the Games will be presented to Nick Bukalatis of Australia. confidence was lacking a little bit after the nationals because I went to Europe and didn't quite do as well in the hundreds. I got some tendon problems and coming here it's a good thing I went to Japan and ran so well because now my confidence is up again. Yeah, that's where it came. Give me 28, the 100 meters for women. Final. National stomach shaker. Second call. You were to report to the Athlete okay. Control Centre in 10 minutes. Do a couple of sit ups. We saw a heat of hers where she ran a time of 10.92, which is half a second better than she's ever run before. Uh, it's better than the Commonwealth Games record, better than the Commonwealth record, unfortunate, a slight wind assisting her. But this girl is tough here. We watched her in warm-up. I spoke to her just after this, uh, the semi-final, and she's ready for this one. I've worked very extremely hard for four years. Hard workouts, I think, makes you extremely tough mentally. I know what I've done. I can look in my book, I write, I have every workout since January 1978 that I started training. Every single day, I've got them written down for four years. So it sort of goes in sequence, you see. And I know that. Three minutes. The person that I really want to beat is Angela Taylor, because I've been behind her for three years, and it's taken me such a long time to be very good, or to, to come to her level. And I feel that now I'm there, I've tied her Canadian record. And if I lose to her, then I can say, OK, Angela Taylor is good but I won't lose because I'm a lot better than she is. On your marks. Record 
time of 11 seconds, Angela Taylor, Canada. Heat rubbing. Uh, heat rubbing my fingers. I rub my eye. Oh. Yeah, you face the front. Down three. Down two. Down one. Just hang on a sec. Okay, there you go. Oh, boy. I hope he doesn't get bitten off. Poor guy in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the salt you had. <laughs> <laughs> Referee Bymer is asking uh, a medical uh, board to come over and have a look at the uh, Canadian. So apparently, is oh, that's all over. He's cut in the eye. Doug Sam has won. Well, that bout didn't go very long. It went one minute and 15 seconds into the first round and a bad gash over the left eye of Kevin McDermott has brought the belt to a halt and he's very, very disappointed. And it looks as though his eyes closed. She's tired and mulling around, you know, not going, you know, you know, I'm ready or what's going to happen or, you know, we'll see. Maybe drinks a couple of cups of coffee, maybe she'll shape up. Did you, did you, did she talk, she talked to you this morning? Well, briefly. I didn't want to talk too much because I was getting a little pissed off on her now. You know, because I assumed she went to the boxing last night. And I said, what time did you get in last night? And it's just, and there's a big pause and it's just only about one o'clock or something. Who knows if she ever came in at all. You know. Great. Ah, my legs. I feel dead. Have some coffee. Something my legs are off the light. Well, that's good, isn't it? That's, that's what you like. That's what you're waiting for. For a job that can touch my knee. What kind of thing? Then you're loose. Okay. Do your full warm up. We'll get a couple of accelerations. I think it's so hard. At least time I have 30, standing 30 or so. Yeah. No, 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 I'm telling you. Uh, he's coming by. He's coming by. When I travel around, John is never with me as a coach. And so I know that once I'm there, I have to prepare myself because of what he's taught me. My weakness would be that I'm not as strong as she is. Angela Taylor. And I'm very independent, and for her, she's always had her coach everywhere she goes, so she... Actually, I don't even believe she'd go to the meet unless Charlie was there. But for myself, I've learned to cope without him and to do my, the best I can, which is to do very well when John's not there. Charlie. Oh, God. Why do I feel... I never felt like this for the hundred. Well, what do you feel like? It's going or it isn't? Yes, my heart. Well, that's what you need. I can feel my heart beating. It's because you're getting ready. Yeah, but you're more ready. 63. Yeah, I know, but you're more ready. 200 than meters yeah. for women. Final. Yeah, you're ready for that race. Final call. Remember, fastest horse with your head position. Now. And bring it home and don't worry because once you got it, they can't do shit. So 
No, I couldn't see a thing at all. I was just reaching for the tape, you know, the finishing line. And I was hoping that I would win it, but it was so close. And did you jump clearly? No. Um, got a smooth start? Well, my start isn't that great, so, but it was okay. See, I'm not, not a good start anyway. You're a great finisher, eh? Yeah. A very rapid time. <laughs> okay, thank you. Women's 200 meters in a time of 22.48 seconds. Angela Taylor representing Canada. Congratulations. Sounds great. <laughs>
got them. They're all in, yes. They're all together. They're looking good. Okay, we're back to the television. Conservation television. First 100 kilometres are, are really a, a warm-up. You can see the way the Canadians leaning over the top of the bike there. It's, they're actually descending down one of the hills now. And the Canadians have been pretty disappointing at their games. Well, they haven't performed up to all, any expectations that we thought. Okay, you know what Louis wanted, right? Just the same. Uh, 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 oh, this race badly. She wants this as a bonus. She's a 200 metre swimmer. She wants about a 62 plus. Thank you. 
she's going to be psyched for that 200. One, two, three, there's Laurie Lawrence. The Australian team's going mad, and so they should. Lisa first, George second, and Audrey Moore third. I'll tell you what, she just got there. Look at the finish. Look at that. And she's looking good for the 200. third in 13.91. There you go, Lisa Forrest, a new games record. And it's also an Australian record. And look at that smile, that's what Lisa Forrest is known for. Lisa Forrest, representing Excited. She don't really get excited, but she, you know, she thinks what I'm doing is great, you know, because I'm the first one from the family who, who really, you know, achieve something like this. So she don't re she don't, you know, she don't even really know what I'm doing. Does she follow you there? Can she, can she... Yeah, yeah, she keep yeah she keep track of what I'm doing all the time. You know, you know, she read the paper and she looks see that she watches on the television, and I write her a lot. You know, sometimes they go, you know, they call me, go to a phone booth and come because they don't have a phone. But I talk to her a lot of times. They try, so they try to find out, you know, ways to communicate with me. Five, Roger Summich of New Zealand, Malcolm Elliott of England, Steve Lawrence of England, Steve Bauer of Canada, and Russell Harrington of Wales, almost within sight of the finish line, about a kilometre from home. Five riders to battle out the three places for medals.
full lap of the 14 kilometre circuit. He started uh, at the top of the hill, I saw him, but the legs was dead. Never I cramp in the race, never. Never, not after 60, 60 miles. Rick Flood is going through the reporting from Radio Trinidad for the Caribbean Broadcast in Union on the men's 400 meters final of the 12th Commonwealth Games. Richard Mitchell. Gregory, lane one, Gary, lane two, Bertland, three, Tim, four, Mike, five, Richard, six. Lane one, representing Australia, Gregory Park. Representing Australia, Gary Minahan. Lane three, representing Jamaica, Bertrand Cameron. Lane four, representing Canada, Tim Bethune. Lane five, representing Uganda, Mike Ocock. Lane six, representing Australia, Richard Mitchell. I know sometimes in life I'm going to start lose, but I don't want it to be now. I lose sometimes, you know, but, but I don't like it, you know. I'm not mad against a guy who beat me, but I just don't like it. So I can't take no chance. All I have to do is just get out and just run. Just go. Set. Don't look back. Just go and run. That's what you have to do, Bert. Just go out there and run. Two fourteen, two three. 
This time is going to be outstanding. And here they come. That's the fans record, the Commodore's record is 24123. I think that might go. Here's the car unit, which is coming up the wall, and it's going to be a great pick right there. Here's the Glass and George's car. This is almost a dead heat. Commonwealth record. Commonwealth record for this young lady right here. There she is. She's taken out the backstroke double, 100 and the 200. Both places, first and second. Lisa and George were both broken for the Commonwealth record. So, Lisa Collins, Georgina Clark second, Cheryl Gibson third. As soon as you drive off, just uh, get up, Phil. While you're getting dressed, line up outside the door, second, first, third. It'll be a fanfare. <laughs> uh, the announcement and then some uh, some waltzing music. Uh, wal <laughs> waltz up the side of the pool so we get to the other end. When you get up to the other end, I'll uh, walk in front a second and lead you across behind the, the podium. Right, I have a matching set now. about the failure or are you going to use it to motivate you to make you more determined than ever that you're not going to settle for that you're going to learn what you can from it you're going to use that knowledge to help assure you of success in the future that's what i've been doing every time I have to that's and you're getting better and better too you've never done a 213 before
to be caught in the middleweight division for the gold medal for the 75 kilograms. Introducing in the red corner, representing England, Jimmy Price. Plenty of speed, plenty of work. And he's a punch in the blue okay. corner, representing Australia, Douglas Sand. And he's a lot bigger than I thought he was. Yeah. Yeah. I think you had too much on your shoulders, right. mate. The crowd and the yeah, occasion. I didn't like seem it. to be thinking, you know. You know. weren't punching I know, I know. hard. I was fucking moving around strong punches, but my mind wasn't there. You're moving the wrong way. Yeah. My, legs, my legs seem to be wanting to go this way. My body wanted to go this way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, even you were moving the wrong way. It was simple. And, and when you right. hit him, they were just like flicks. You know, there was no power there, certainly. I'd go to the street and get my big brother and wait outside for him. He'd have a few bees in him now, too. Oh, 
I can hear it. Oh, Maybe a, a two years, and uh, maybe I'm gonna stop after the Olympic Games because I want, I want be an artist. I want put my times in art. If I won a gold medal, I'd like to get in and and um, make some make some money, some big money, you know, some big fights. That's if I get the gold. Even if I don't get to go, I guess it's probably still doing. Thank you very much. 